So, well, good day to you. This is Craig Blanchett, and we're here for um, our uh, work group session. This is our boot camp, week number two. We, uh, we were informed or modeled on our boot camp last Saturday. It was the well-being assessment that uh, Dr. A and Take Shape for Life, uh, soon to be Optavia, came up with. And and we also talked about the value of story and the value of asking questions and learning someone else's story and relating to uh, to them. Um, so those are the two things we're going to be working on today. But as we're as we're getting started here, I just wanted to talk a little bit about when you are performing a well-being assessment with people. It's it's often very valuable. Um, to to dialogue with people and ask questions kind of behind the first question to help sort of get their um, get the mental momentum going. And one of the things that I've done is uh, I was just talking about when you're asking a question about like, you know, hobbies, oftentimes people's recreation and hobbies are they, they score themselves very low. And in those situations, I find that it's helpful to give them sort of a contrasting statement. If they're like, well, I just don't really know. Well, what did you do in the past? What did you do in high school? Did you have any hobbies ever? What do you do for fun? If, it was, if you were all by yourself and you had a month without work, what, what would you do? And they're like, wow, well, I don't know. Well, would it, be, would it be involving people or by yourself? So you can start off kind of really – really broad would it be uh and if they say with people okay would you be doing something outdoors or indoors you know and you can sort of just try to try to narrow things down and um with the person i was doing a well-being assessment with this week she talked about a dress and um, i said well tell me about the dress and she said well it's, i said what color is it she said it's black i said well what else tell me more about it and she says, well, I don't know, it's a black dress. And so I said, well, long sleeves or short sleeves? You know, she said, well, long sleeves, of course. So, okay, because it's a formal dress, I guess. And then, so what's the, um, what about the length? Is it, is it short or long? And she said, well, it's at knee height. Okay, okay. Does it have lace or no lace? Does it have, you know, a back or no back? Does it, um, you know, just different things like that. And and then I said, imagine yourself, you know, in that dress, you know, what kind of things come to your mind? But these are the kinds of questions when you're, when you're really investigating, you're trying to get to the, not to the emotional side of what that dress looks like or what that dress would feel like to wear, not just what it looks like over there on the shelf, but what it would feel like in their imagination, wearing it, being able to accomplish what's necessary for that to fit properly. And so, um, anyway, so we're going through a little bit of that, but I'm curious as we're getting started here, we're going to be doing some well-being assessments with each other. And uh, by the way, good morning, Troy. Nice to see your smiley face on the on this morning. Um, How are you? I'm doing really good, but I just wanted to toss it to you and to the and to the gang. If you if you had a comment on uh, or some feedback on the well-being assessment. Um, feedback on the storyline, but I'll, I'm going to just toss it back to you for a minute here, Troy, and let you welcome the gang and offer whatever you'd have. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. On the fourth, we're. Uh, it's nice that uh, you show up, and uh, these are the the diehards, the dedicators, right? Mm -hmm. Be here. You the guys morning. might, by the way, if you have people that are part of your team that normally couldn't attend the morning, they might be off today. You might. Sh um, shoot them a quick message said hey we only have one power hour today or i mean one uh, work group so it's just the morning session yeah so you know um as we look at uh the well-being uh evaluation uh, craig what i really like is that as you look at, at at really you know perfecting uh what you're doing as, as the right questions because in reality we look at how we look at healthy body healthy mind healthy finance and how we, you know, kind of picture that uh, potential client, right? And how we're talking with them. Uh, are we, are we bringing up the things that basically the, that's the, the, the kind of the weak spots? Because we're we're looking at that and we're seeing, okay, so 
you know, maybe healthy body is not the greatest or maybe healthy finance isn't the greatest. And so we're really asking a lot of questions in there to where we're really understanding what they want to create, right? What their why is. So, you know, as you, as you look at this and, and as, um, you know, especially with the um, well-being tracker, it's just, it's, it's crucial to really follow that, um, you know, just like, you know, it was practiced on Saturday. So, you know, there's a lot of things that um, we go in as our business and we think, well, we got this. Well, I don't even have this. So, you know, and I know Craig doesn't. So we're always, we're always practicing in the way of, you know, wanting to get better and better at, at being that professional health coach. Because just like, you know, Craig has said quite a few times, you know, you go in that doctor office and you fill out forms. So if we do this at the beginning with that client, that potential client, and they become a coach, we've already laid the groundwork for them. And they already understand how they come in. So, you know, that's why it's, uh, that's why Craig, I think it's so crucial as we follow these steps, we don't want to, we don't, we want to make sure we cross the T's dot the I's and everything we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's great. By the way, thank you, Troy. The, the last boot camp we were in, we talked about that. And so some of you may or may not have been there, but some people maybe have been doing things the old way or doing things with just getting to the why that makes them cry. I've heard them, people say that, or you just do a little um, interview with people and, and you're sort of getting, to, well, how much weight do you want to lose? What would it look like? How that make you feel? Okay, great. Here's our program. You know, whereas this is a lot more trilogy esque, right? This is a wellness profile. And I will tell you if wellness feels more challenging, it is, it is. Wellness is way more challenging than weight loss, but with, with a greater challenge comes a greater reward. You cannot, there's, a, there's an equal balance there. The harder something is, the more rewarding when you achieve it will be. And so um, you, gotta, uh, you gotta work hard if you want big, big things. And so, but we talked about when you, if you're used to doing something the old way or a previous way, and you're uncomfortable with the well-being assessment, uh, Troy just kind of mentioned that when you go into a doctor's office, they have you fill out a form that gives them some information. It's, it's a formal kind of thing. Well, the well-being assessment is a formal kind of thing. And everybody that I talk to, <clears throat> every person that I consider for program and to work with them as a coach, they, um, uh, I have them do a wellness assessment because I don't really know how to coach them or where they even want to go unless I do. I mean, sure, they want to lose weight. It's like getting in the car and take me somewhere. Where do you want to go? I don't know, east. Can you be a little more specific? Like, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> Do you want to go, you know, to the beach or the mountains? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Craig. And the other thing too is that as you look at, as you all look at, look at perfecting your your health coaching business. Um, you know, I always look at it this way: I can't send them on the path unless I know what kind of journey they want, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so where are we at with that? And if we're not asking enough questions, then we don't know which direction, like Craig said, which direction to take them. So always think of, think of it this way. We are not here to sell a product. We're not here to say, oh, you want to lose weight? Great. I got the antidote right here. Here, let me, let me, let me get you signed up real quick. Because remember, we don't, we don't, we don't stock product. So think about what we're wanting to, we're guiding. The company is paying us, compensating us to guide that client through the process, right? We want to be the guide and you want to be, you know, you want to be that tour guide. So, you know, as you navigate through the waters with your, with your clients, you have a better understanding of the direction they want to go. Perfect. So a couple of things, if you guys, if you guys have some, maybe an aha moment, about, oh, I've never done this before. You know, I'd love for you to raise your hand and uh, we'll talk for that for just a minute. And then while you guys are thinking about that, what we're going to do today is we're going to take the well being assessment. And so I want to show you where to get these things. I've created a document. This is the first time we've done this, uh, Troy. But we're learning, we're getting better. Uh, 
So I've created a, a, a doc that is in our uh, bootcamp workgroup Facebook page. I'm going to show you how to go and find some of the resources for those of you that may have not seen that. So I'm going to share my screen here. At the top of the uh, window here, you'll see it says recordings. And if you click on that link, you'll it'll open up to this document that's inside of um, that's inside the page. And uh, you can see week one, this was the topic. This was a boot camp, you know, where we actually trained on it. And these are the two work group sessions that you can watch later and you can actually practice or do what we've done. Week two here. And then on week two, I've got the um, session links. Uh, and under the session links, you've got, um, whoops, let me do that again. My, uh, my uh, de attention to detail was kicking in and there was a space in front of the, <laughs> in front of the S. Anyway, uh, from Simple Systems, of course, you have the well-being tracker. You have the well-being assessment PDF. You have the health assessment outline. This is, these are just some additional things that you can uh, use to walk you through. It's like a script of what to ask and what to do. And then you have the um, Optavia Cornerstone graphic. Now this one here is not in Simple Systems. This is just a graphic I created that um, helped visualize what the trilogy was and how things fit together. And then here's our link for the boot camp, the first boot camp. And then today there's not going to be a PM, so just we'll, there'll be an AM link for what we're doing right now. But you guys are want to go, going to want to go to that document now. Another thing I wanted to show you, which you may not um, know about, is um, you can um, on the phone it looks a little bit different. And so on the um, on the phone when you're in Facebook and you go to the group. Um, let's see here, bootcamp power hour, you go into the thing and you're like, well, where's, where's that document? I don't see that document. It's not here. Where is it? I don't see it. Go to the very top. You see that it says right under joined view pinned post right there at the top, right there. If you click on that viewed pin post, that's when you can go in and you can find this document I just showed you from the phone. So it's a little bit different. It, it pins it to the top. Uh, but it doesn't, it's not as obvious as it is on the, um, on the desktop version. So, all right. So we had, uh, oh, we had someone with their hand up, but. Hey, they, hey Craig, yeah. I, I wanted to say one thing. Um, I'm sure uh, everybody appreciates what you do in the way of, uh, you know, all the details. And I wanted to thank you personally. For, um, for doing that and helping and guiding all of us through the process because I think um, you know when you when you have a good uh, a good guide it really helps to understand everything so oh yeah thank you yeah you're welcome my mind but I just want to first of all say you're welcome it's my pleasure and then I'll add this little piece at the end is my mind gets lost quickly and so I'm like, okay, I'm kind of lost here. What do I do? And so I keep thinking of, am I lost? And I keep thinking of, well, uh, kind of. Okay, so I need to make this really clear. And so showing you, by the way, I just taught you two things right then. I taught you about pinned posts on the, um, there's my cute little wife. Uh, I taught you about pinned posts on the mobile device, but I also taught you how that you can share your screen if you have a Apple device through Zoom, right? Or at least you know that you can do that now. And so um, you can Google that and find the answer on how you too can share your screen. <laughs> so, um, all right. So we're going to get started then with this first section and we're going to, um, we're going to bust you guys out into two groups. So you're going to need a few things in order for this to be successful. One, you're going to need the well-being assessment in front of you. So both parties are going to have to have the well-being assessment up in front of them. So go out to the Facebook page and click on those links and have, have the questions up there. So you have, it's that, it's that PDF version of the well-being assessment. And by the way, just so this gets on the recording, Survey Gizmo, which is, is the tool that we have the electronic version of the well-being assessment that's available on your co-branded website. Sometimes the, um, the handoff between Sergey, get Survey Gizmo and your email gets broken. And so you need to call field first and say, hey, 
my survey gizmo is broken. By the way, I think they've been having more calls than ever before because more we have these boot camps and we're using this tool a lot, which is a good thing. So you want to call them and they'll get that fixed up for you. But we're going to send you off into, so you're going to need the, the, the questions to ask. You're going to need the, um, the document where you track their information. So that's called the well-being tracker, right? Um, you're going to need those two things. And then I like to have the BMI chart up in front of me as well. And because um, when I'm going through the numbers, if what we're going to do this morning is you're going to each pick one of the three parts of the trilogy. Just pick one for time's sake. And you're going to take a second and answer the, the six questions. And uh, I think it's six. I don't know however many questions there are per category. And then, um, and then when, when you do your interview with the other person, they'll say, so, um, you know, tell me your scores, you know, and you just do the numbers, nine, eight, six, three, two, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then just go ahead and talk about the two lowest scores. Okay, so you were a three in hobbies. I don't know what a three means. So can you quantify what your current reality looks like for your hobbies being a three? And the reason why I go into that much detail is because sometimes they talk about what they wish it was because they, they don't really they have a hard time being in current reality. They want to go into what they wish it was because they want you to be proud of them. There's all these different things that go on in the process. But so current reality, what do your hobbies look like? What do you do now? Okay, and then, so if we were to fast forward into the future and you filled this out again and you came in at an eight, what would be different? And now they get to start dreaming. That's my favorite part. Oh, well, I would do this and that. And I'd ride motorcycles and I'd go camping and I'd do hiking. And so it's a lot of fun. So let's get some breakout rooms going, right? You guys ready for this? Buckle up. Buckle up. It's the 4th of July. We've got to buckle up. Yeah. All right. So it looks like we've got 12 rooms today which makes sense because there's 24 people here. Just a quick math. All right, so create breakout rooms. Does anybody have a question about what we're gonna do or what, what's going on right now? What you need, the tools you need, where to find them? Rita. Is this the, is this the questionnaire thing that you want us to work with? The client health assessment one or is there a different one? No. The client health assessment, so there's two trackers that are in the back office. One's called a well-being tracker. Well, that's the one, yeah, you're going to take your scores off of. Each, each person is going to pick one of the parts of the trilogy of that thing you just, you just showed. And then you're just going to quickly, at the very beginning, just go through and mark scale of 1 to 10 in, in one category, right? So first you start with both of you taking the assessment and then the other person's, each of you are going to interview. So which person out of the, which part of the trilogy did you decide to answer? Oh, healthy mind. Great. Okay. So you want to share your scores with me and just write down the scores and then go back to the bottom two. By the way, when you do this in real life, this happens sometimes where people didn't fill out the survey ahead of time. And so you just interview them right now. One of the nuances there that I do is I say, okay, Rita, so, um, because since you didn't have enough time to fill that out before we got here, let's just do it right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And if you can just give me the number for time's sake, and then we'll circle back and go deeper on a couple of them because they'll start talking about hobbies. Well, back in 1942, I used to, and they'll go into this big, long story and it'll take an hour. So just get the number and then circle back on the bottom the two lowest scores and then get current reality what a two means or whatever their low number means and then fast forward i usually go for an 8 it's not perfect but it's better than a 5 or 6 or 7 right so it's pretty good and if they pause just give them space let them when they're not talking it means they're thinking which means they're going into their imagination so give them time to be there. It might feel a little weird when you have this silence, but let, let it happen. And we're going to give you, give you guys, um, we're going to give 20, 20 minutes for this. 
And so you're going to fill out the survey. Each of you will interview the other person. When you're done with the interview, you've taken some notes. And so you say, well, Rita, let me make sure that I, that I got this right. I want to make sure I heard you because this is important. You just shared your dreams with me, right? So here's where you started, blah, 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 blah. And it was this and it was that. And then if that would, this was to get better, it would look like this. You'd need this and that and that. And this is why it's important to you. And then you, you tell them the whole story back. And then you say, did I miss anything? Did that make sense? Anything, anything come to mind as I was telling you your story back? Don't, don't, this will be the, the part that you'll be tempted to not do because it's a little bit um, intimate when you're telling them their story back to them. And it's kind of, it can be a little, a little person. It's a little personal. It's very personal, but make sure you do it because what you're telling them is you're important to me. And I listen to you. I wrote it down and here's your story back to you. I just wrote down your dreams and it's super important. And then you can use the cornerstone document. Well, I know where you are. And you told me where you want to be. Let's, let me show you how we'll get there. And just quickly jump to the four cornerstones. That's like the cornerstone path of how to get them there. And then you remember our two questions. The first question after you've, you've done the assessment, you've t told them back, you've told them how to get there. This one you may want to write down. It's based upon what you just heard. How is this program different from things you've done in the past? Really, really important piece because they're going to basically be telling you why your program rocks because it does. But they're going to be telling you rather than you telling, telling and, you know, them. And then agree with them or say, you know, and then you say, well, and here's the closer. This is the point that brings them to a point of decision. It's not manipulating them into saying yes, but you're bringing them to a point of decision. And so you can say, Allison, you know, so um, I heard you really clearly, right? I heard where you are, where you want to be. I know what you want. And they know you know because you just told them. And I know, I'm, I like to use the word, I'm certain I can get you there or we can get you there. I'm certain. The really, the next step really is when do you want to start this process? When do you want to get started? Where should we have your kit shipped? You know, what credit card would you like to put this on? I mean, you can be bold. They just shared with you their dreams and you just said, yes, yes, we can go get those. It'll take some time, but we can go get them. And so I'm certain I can get you there. When are we going to get started? And then stop talking. <laughs> So those are two pivotal pieces at the end, all right? You guys all ready? You got this, by the way. If this feels a little clunky and weird, remember the first time you tried to ride a bike, <laughs> right? Or tried to jump rope? Yeah, so we're gonna be, we're gonna be building some new muscles and some new, um, some new uh, um, muscle memory. All right, two per room, recreate rooms. All right, go get them, tigers. the um, well, I can do it. so here's the cool thing why don't you share screen Craig just share yeah. screen well no here's what happens this <laughs> this happens in real life too <laughs> he only had a flip phone he's like computers Yeesh. I'm on the phone <laughs> I'm like you know what? we're gonna do this right now right here and so I said um, with this person I just said you know what? why don't you just give me some answers and I'll just walk you through this and so um, we'll do the same with you right now, and it'll be good for the recording to show that. So out of the healthy body, healthy mind, and healthy finances, do you have one of those areas that you'd prefer to, um, to talk through? The healthy body. 
Healthy body, great, okay. All right, so uh, well, I've got six questions. I'm gonna ask you a scale of one to 10. And um, so just give me, give me your, the number first and then we'll go back and we'll, we'll get a little bit more detail because some of these areas might be pretty good. So we're gonna focus on the ones that aren't as good as you want them to be. Sound good? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, well, there's two things here. I could interview you, which seems like normal. But would you feel it would it probably be better if you interviewed me, although you don't have the paper in front of you. <clears throat> but um, yeah, well, yeah, just get a pen and a piece of paper, and you're going to write down the numbers that I give you, and then you're okay. just gonna ask me questions about what that number means now, and what that number would look like if it got better. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to doing these myself. I almost just took over. <laughs> amateur hour here <clears throat> so the, the the six different categories i'll just give you my numbers because you may not have it in front of you just have a piece of paper and a pen are you good with okay. that okay mm -hmm. so weight status weight status i may six okay. uh, eating habits um currently eating habits i'm a six okay physical activity um, I'm about a seven. Okay. Sleeping, I'm about a nine. Uh, relaxation, I'm about a nine. And safe and healthy, I'm about a six. Okay. All right, so you... Actually, that was hard for you to do because I had a bunch of ones that are the same number. So weight status, move that to a five. Okay. That way it's kind of the lowest one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> um, on, on the... On the evaluation, we're going to talk about the two lowest numbers that you had. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the weight status. What would hold on, a hold on. pause just for a second? I want okay. to make sure everybody switch. Finish up and switch. Ten minutes. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so on your weight status, that was your lowest one. So what mm -hmm. that was a five. So what would it look like if it was an eight or a nine? So what you want to do is start with helping me define current reality because you don't oh, know okay. you don't know what a five it's just an ambiguous number to you. Okay. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So with the weight status, oddly enough, the weight status category is the one that's easily quantifiable because it's okay. like if hobbies, it's kind of ambiguous. Weight status, it's a number, right? Mm -hmm. So the number is 138. And so okay. at that point, then I would do, okay, so 138. So how tall are you? So you're getting some details as to, because that's the one you can, you can kind of predict in mm -hmm. the future what it means to be in the green zone if that if you know if that okay. means right on the bmi chart yeah and i'm a okay. little weird i'm three foot nine so i'm always <laughs> overweight because i'm so short but okay anyway yeah All so right. 139 is my current reality okay and you might and even say tell me more what that looks like or how do you feel about that because you want to kind of get some some details around how that feels the emotional side of the the number yeah. i guess mm -hmm. right? so yeah. tell me right now at 138 what does that feel like to you yeah i feel like i'm about seven pounds i like to hover around 130 to 132 that's kind of a sweet spot for me and okay. uh, and so yeah so i'm a little little heavier than i want i'm still in the green zone but that's just an excuse to say, well, I'm not as bad as I once was, but I'm still not where I want to be. Okay. So what would, 
what would being 130, 132 mean for you? What would that, what would, how would that feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way that feels is I just feel my clothes fit properly. I mean, they fit fine now, but they just feel, they fit a little bit better. And um, I forgot to set my timer again. We're going to go eight minutes. Okay. Um, and then um, when I when I am getting in and out of my wheelchair, when I'm going up and down stairs, when I'm moving around, it just feels like my body feels like it's lighter. Well, because it is. But I feel like I have more mobility and more freedom at 132 than I do at, at 138. 139 whatever it is and I also feel like when I look in the mirror like the reflection is more fine-tuned it's more um, it's more ownership over her over my physical um, my physical body and it also gives me confidence because I, I know I have the tools but having the tools just like anything, having the tools in my in my garage doesn't mean I build anything. I have to go out to the garage and open the toolbox, and I have to actually grab a hammer. I have to do something with it. And so I have some amazing tools as a lifestyle coach, um, but it shows that I'm using them. Okay. Okay. So just to recap what you've just said to make sure that I have go, go ahead and go to one more, one more low oh, okay. before you do the recap. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, let's talk about your, your eating. That mm -hmm. was at a six. Tell yeah. me what that means. Yeah. Um, it means that I'm, I'm having, um, I'm not, I'm not disconnected with what I'm eating, but it means that I'm having, um, I'm having little extras, a little bit here, a little bit there, which when it comes to food, that's, uh, that's, that can be a big deal. A little bit of ice cream or a little bit of, you know, this thing can have thousands of calories. And so, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm having two, um, lean and greens throughout the day where usually um, I have a, a light lean and green and then a normal lean. So I do like a, I do a four, I do a three, one, and two. So I do three fuelings. I do one sort of healthy snack, piece of fruit, something like that. And then I do two lean and greens. And one of them is usually a little bit smaller. And so a four and two roughly is what I can live on pretty easily. And what I'm doing in that situation is I'm just, um, you know, I'm having a, I'm having, um, like a little extra hummus or I'm having, you know, two, two burritos instead of one. Um, so I'm just not, you know, like a handful of nuts when buying nuts again. And when I buy nuts and have those in the house, it's just not usually a good thing. I don't need nuts. It's not something I want. And they are, they are energy dense for sure. Mm -hmm. So you're having a handful instead of like measuring which ones, yeah. what, how much, I measure right? like <clears throat> four handfuls throughout. The <laughs> That's my <laughs> so you said you're not disconnected from food. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? I'm not disconnected. Well, I'm not just like anything goes, let's have pizza every night and let's go out mm -hmm. for burgers. You know, when I go out to eat, I'm still like went out on Tuesday or, or uh, it was Sunday. And I had a chicken bowl with, instead of rice, I had double veggies. So I'm still making educated, healthy choices. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm just, you know, I'm just not on my A game, you know, focused okay. as much as I like to be. I'm probably, okay. instead of like a nine or a 10, I'm down, you know, on my A game, I'm like 80%, 90% there. So Okay. So what does what does a nine or a ten look like when yeah. you're? It looks like um, a fueling for breakfast. Like this morning, I had a cappuccino. I love those. I have those almost every day, and it just means I'm setting my timer. 
So I eat when on a timer and I don't just eat when my mind says I'm hungry because it'll say I'm hungry for different reasons. So I eat when it's time to eat, not when I'm emotionally hungry or when I'm bored or when I just want to avoid something. And mm -hmm. uh, it means watching my portions. I do really okay. well when I'm almost not hungry. So when I'm still slightly hungry at the end of my meal, rather than full. Okay. You know? And that and I my body thrives. Well, you know, when I don't just keep eating because it tastes good, but I stop a little bit short of being full. Okay. This is, by the way, very helpful. <laughs> just to just to process through this. <laughs> well. I think you're helping me more than I'm helping you. First, but. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just recap before we have people come back in. So um, on your weight, you your current reality is 138, but you'd like to get to about 130, 132. And <clears throat> the reason why that 130 or 132 feels better is because of the you, your clothes fit better. Mm -hmm. um, you're more mobile. You feel more um, more tuned, fine tuned. Um, you have more ownership in your in who you are and how you feel instead of just existing. I guess that's that that's how I took the ownership. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Yeah. It's and. Yeah, I'd say it's just sort of being um, deliberate about things. Yeah. Okay, yeah. deliberate. Okay, and then the last one was that you had more confidence. So that's that's. I feel like um, I feel like I'm in integrity because what okay. I know, what I believe in, I'm doing. Whereas okay. right now, I'm eighty percent doing it. You know, but I just feel like there's a little discrepancy there. Okay. 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 And then um, on your, huh? You need a no, second. my, my kids are just, they just got home from the 4th of July flag raising. So they're okay. going crazy. So, um, so, we've, so on we've your, now. In your mind, what we've accomplished is where where I am, where I want to be. So we have the bookends. And now okay. you're going to fill up those bookends with the cornerstones. Okay. Do you know about the four cornerstones? Yeah, the um, community. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then, so tie it all together. So now you'll basically say, well, I know where you are, and you just told me where you want to be. And so let me show you a path of how we can get you there. Okay. So <clears throat> I've, I've seen where you are and I've seen where your, your goal is, where you want to be. And so the, the path that we have is um, four cornerstones. We have community, meaning that you have lots of, lots of support, lots of, lots of help. You also have a health coach, which would be me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you have the, I can't remember the third one. Yeah, see, so I have, there's a document um, that, I, that I had in the, in, the, um, uh, in the room, and you might want to print that out when you get a second because mm -hmm. it'll help visualize. I usually do my well-being assessments over Zoom, but it really helps oh. me visualize what it is for me and for them. Okay. Can you see it on the screen now? Those four things at the bottom. Yeah. I always mm -hmm. start with the fueling, and I don't just talk about our meal replacements. I talk okay. about fueling your body. You know, so you talked about um, community. You talked about. Mm -hmm. So now you know the other two. Okay. Um, so we have, we have the community. We have the coaching. We also the the habits that we develop, the, the habits of health that we have, that um, it's, it's not just a, this isn't a diet. This is 
truly creating lifelong habits that will stay with us for the rest of our lives. And um, then we have the feelings that, that fuel our body correctly with the right nutrition and the right um, portions. And um, I haven't really figured out how to talk about the feelings yet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so um, that's going to be really good for practice because <clears throat> having complete ownership over the cornerstones, making sure you're mm -hmm. sure footed as you're crossing, as you're taking people from where they are to where they want to be. Think of it mm -hmm. like you're on one side of a river. I'm going to call everybody back now because um, okay. this will be a good analogy. But thinking about you're on one side of the river and you're taking them to the other side of the river and you're going to be stepping on stones. Sometimes those stones are slippery if we're not really sure about them. But mm -hmm. if we really own them, they can be um, really sure-footed. I, I, I want to just want to encourage you, Angie, practice, practice, practice. Okay. Yep, because you'll you'll, you will have full ownership and mastery over this. Um, you know, and that will be... That'll be good for everyone. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Thank for, you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So a uh, couple things. I, I worked with Angie uh, during mine, and one of the things um, – actually, I'm curious, as Angie was interviewing me, just to get a little bit of feedback directly from you as to how that felt, what, you know – Anytime we do an activity, I learned this. Um, I learned this from Greg Rex, I think. We call him G Rex, which is how it sounds mm -hmm. odd. It's um, what happened. So we sort of discuss kind of what happened. So it seemed like this was going on, this was going on. And then what was missing? Was there something missing? There's always something missing because you're not perfect. You're always going to need to improve. And then what's next? Where do we go from here? So what happened? What was missing? What's next? And so uh, what was your experience as you were interviewing me? Did you have any, what went well? <clears throat> um, I think that while I was taking notes and that's when I've done a, a well being evaluation before, I've just kind of listened. I haven't really taken the notes like I should and so I was able to go back and and use your words I noticed to, that that felt very edifying to me you use mm -hmm. my words and I was like oh yeah. she was listening immediately my mind said oh, she was listening mm -hmm. so so that part I felt like I I did better in and then um, and then I was trying to write down um, I mean, when you would switch back over to the to the teaching mode, and you would tell me things that I needed to to do, the bookends and and divine the current reality, those were things that I I wrote down too, so that I could go back and remember these are the things that I need to focus on. And um, so, you mentioned to everybody what you said at the end is you were trying to you were trying to tell me in a confident way, how to take me from where I told you I was today and where I wanted to be in the future. And you're, you were talking about the four cornerstones of the way that we do that. And you felt some insecurity there. I want to talk through that a little bit. Yeah, I just, I didn't, the, the community and the habits and the coaching, I'm really like, I, I am really on board with that. And I, I have seen that totally throughout my my personal journey but i ha i haven't really quite figured out how to talk about the feelings without i mean we we say we're not selling a product we're not selling a product but i i haven't figured out how to talk about the feelings without feeling like i'm selling a product so mm -hmm. i'm not very confident in that part great thank you very much i see a lot of heads nodding um what? Here's an analogy. I, I always see things in word pictures best. Um, and so if this helps you, great. Uh, but think about it where you're, you're out in the wilderness and you, and you come up to the side of a, of a river. And so current reality is you're on the west side of the river. And then you have this river between you and where you want to be. 
That's, that's what we do as coaches. We, we help people with current reality and then we help them visualize what the future would look like if it was better. And then we provide stepping stones, cornerstones to get across that river and achieve what, what they want. Now, I don't know who, who here's walked across the river before and aren't those rocks sometimes a little mossy and slippery and you're not sure where they are. Sometimes there aren't rocks there and you're like, there's no way you're going to get across there. So imagine if you became really, really skilled at knowing what the four cornerstones are. These are the cornerstones of Octavia, right? So you've got these four little stepping stones here. And each one of these stepping stones has some depth to it. The coaching program. Basically, that's someone that's going to be walking side by side and saying, hey, step here. See, there's another one over there. Yep. Okay, we need to stand here for a little while. And you don't you want to make sure when you're walking across the river that you are confident in those stones. Because they're a little if if it's like, no, just step there. I know you can't see it. I don't even sure it's there, but just kind of take the next step, right? That's not going to be real confident building. So you want to spend some time with these, massage these, figure out what these are to you. I talk about fueling, not just fuelings what we have to offer, but fueling your body. Because we're going to teach them lean and green. We're going to teach them how to eat at a restaurant, how to survive a potluck, how to navigate 4th of July party time. We're going to teach them all of those very, very, very practical skills. We're also going to give people tools to be able to, um, um, uh, to be able to fill in the gaps to be able to get the nutrition that they need in a convenient manner. That's, all, that's the fuelings that Optavia offers, right? And then we are community. Our community primarily happens if in your Facebook group and on the support calls, logging into the webinar. You know, if you have a healthy, happy hour, then there's some community, but sometimes our clients aren't close enough to even do that. So do you, have you considered an online healthy, happy hour? regularly that people can tune into but community you know is critical and so do you do you have ownership over what community are you part of community and are you creating community and then habits that's the habits of health curriculum right so that's going through the um the study the the um, habits of health book and and curriculum where they can walk through that so they don't just hypothetically know things but they actually have a good awareness and they apply it to themselves. By the way, if you don't do the workbook or the journal, it's just head knowledge. A lot of people don't want to do that workbook because then they have to apply it to themselves. But it doesn't work unless you apply it to yourself and in the coaching. So make sure you're really familiar with those things because these are your tools. You're an Optavio um, health coach and these are your tools. Nothing else. These things. These are the four main cornerstones. So I'm curious as a show of hands. Um, and by the way, if you fail, if you're not familiar with them, that's on you. Because you've got all day today. What if you mastered these? What if you thought about what does that mean? What if, what if during your holiday celebration today, you went around with these cornerstones and you said, let me, let me show you these four tools that we use as part of coaching. And if I just showed you those, what would you say? What would that mean to you? Maybe you get some perspective from, from family members about what these four things are. Dive in, learn these, know these, master these. So who wants to go first? A uh, little feedback on um, what we talked about today in your interview section. Any, any takeaways or highlights? You can raise your hand. Or you can just come off of mute. I think I <laughs> I think it was awesome pulling together the the final points of it. You know, being able to help them because that's always been a hard one for me, helping people dream weave. And to pull it all together and use, you know, the, their words, and then you know, I see what you're trying to create. We had a little stumbling block about um the four cornerstones, you know, where is that come in? Is it after you say, you know, I see what you're going to create, you know, I, I 
am certain that we can help you with that. Only yeah, it's before. Think about it. Think about logically. You've interviewed them. You asked them where they want, where they are, where they want to be, and you told them back to them. Did I miss anything? So it's like I know you. I know where you are. I know where you want to be. I know why you want to be there. I know you. I just told you that I know you, and you said yes. You know me. Okay. Boom. That's the first part. That's the bookends. That's the, the sides of the river, the banks, the two banks of the river. Now, the cornerstones are the stepping stones to get you across that river. So now you have to say, here's how, here's how we're going to get you there. So then you talk about fueling your body with the Optavia fuelings and with the lean and green and with lots of different things, right? We've got a five-in-one, which is our weight loss program, and then we've got our sustainable program after weight loss. We're going to teach you both. We're going to work with you on both. Then we have the community. What's the community mean? If you don't know what the community me means, you'll just go, yeah, we have community moving on. Are you plugged into community? There's a question. Then we have the habits of health. Have you read the habits of health? Do you know what it is? Do you know why? Have you looked at the workbook? Have you completed the workbook? If you haven't, it probably won't mean that much to you. And then coaching. Probably coaching means something to you right? Because you're a coach. So at some level, that means something to you. So you talk about these cornerstones. And then I say, now you tell me, reflect on those cornerstones. Okay. Re tell me why those cornerstones would, would get you from here to there. Or what would that be different? And so, so, and then you say, well, first part of the conversation, I know where you are and where you want to be. Second part of the conversation, I'm certain I can get you there. When are we going to get going? How much longer are you going to wait? So we, let's just, let's start. We'll start as soon as you're ready. Let's get going. Because your dreams aren't going to wait, but you're going to get a day older tomorrow. All right, Casey, I'll unmute you. Go ahead. Yeah, I suck at this. <laughs> I'm not good. I need lots and lots of practice. <laughs> So That's and it's hard it's hard sitting here because i don't have this in front of me like on my phone it's hard to flip back and forth mm -hmm. so uh so Casey, two I'll things here have to go can you write yourself a note that says when you find a printer somewhere print them because <laughs> because next time yes. next time you do this if you say well i didn't have them in front of me that's on you right you can have right. them in front of you. So do it. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What else? Yeah. When, when I go home, I'll have to print it out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had trouble getting from telling her, telling her story, listening to her to the cornerstones. Like I, I straight up ask her, Hey, what do we do next? Mm. So yeah, so let me, you know, let me do that uh, one more time in your guys' mind. So you have to think of it. I mean, I know logically when you start out, you want to know where they are, where they want to be, and that's those sides of the, of the river. And then the cornerstones are just think of it. They're four big stones that take you across that river. I don't know if I hope that visual helps you in your mind. Do you know, do you, do you only have one of those stones? That's going to be a big jump. Probably they're not going to make it, right? If all you have is the fuelings, <laughs> it's powerful, but it's only one stone. This is a long way to go, you know? And so you have to get them on those different four stones. So, so explore those. Figure out what those really mean to you. What has the community really done? Make this personal. Own it. And then, okay. and then you tie it all together. Yep. Thank you. All right. Hey, uh, thanks. Oh, go ahead. Did you have anything else, Casey? No, thank you, Craig. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, by the way, thank you guys for not for stumbling. Thank you for practicing. Thank you for mis making mistakes because mistakes are not failure. Oh my goodness, that's what that's how we learn. So way to go, Karen. Well, I just wanted to say this: these trainings are amazing because. Um, you know, many of us, at least for myself, I've never been coached this way. Mm. Ne never been coached, didn't have the habits of health when I started. I mean, it didn't even exist. It was, we sold Metafast products. Right. 
And so to revamp my thinking and to learn these skills is it's like I'm having to go back to school again. And sometimes going back to school, I'm not getting the best grades. And um, I'm having to learn a lot of these things. And that's why this training, I mean, I wish I could grab every single one of my coaches and try to convince them to come back into these groups right now because this is what we've needed. Mm. These kind of trainings are what we've needed. So I don't know how many of you are on the line that are like me, but I think there's many of us that are in this from looking at the variety of people that are here but it it's like just working with Rita again today and focusing on an area in that well-being it, every single time I practice it at first it was just a tool to use now it's a tool to use and learn and really get to know the person from to get deeper by using that tool because I think each step that we're doing is is learning helping us to become better people and coaches mm -hmm. but i certainly haven't arrived and reading dr a's book yeah i read it what how many years ago and flipped to it once in a while but i haven't gone back to that book and really digested it again for a long time because when i got it it was like brand new but i haven't been in there eating it up again mm -hmm. and so those are all things that are great reminders, I think, for all yeah. of us. Well, and one of the things I was thinking, thank you, Karen. Um, if we're really going to be a wellness coach and not diet coaches, we've got to embrace all four cornerstones and not just the, the magic meal replacements. Right? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that because I just am trying to trick you into thinking that's true. I, I think that really is true. It, it is because that's the, that's what many of us who have done this for a while, you know, that's where we've been stuck. Mm -hmm. And so it's revamping where we're at to mm -hmm. a whole different place. Cause it's so easy to just, so the lady who spoke earlier, she's not, you know, you're not alone with feeling like I don't get this or I don't do this. I don't do this. Well, you know, that's why, I mean, that these trainings are amazing and i wish every i wish this was like you got to go to school and check this off <laughs> well and then you got to go back to school again you got to keep go learning back to school and check it off and i've learn. done i've done a thousand well-being assessments and i'm still not i still don't is i'm not as good as i want it to be i want it to be so good that i that i give everything and they go wow okay let's start somewhere I want them all to say yes to something, to the, a baby step. Even when they say no to the full program, I want them to say yes to something. And still, they're still saying no to everything. <laughs> and I'm like, what? That's what perplexes me. You know what? That's a really good point, Craig, because sometimes you do that wellness assessment and, and, and uh, it may not hurt to say, so what you're saying is no to everything. Yeah. What you're telling me is that you're just saying no to healthy body, healthy mind, healthy finances. And so there's no place for me to take you in any of it. And that's being honest. Yeah. So, well, that's a good place. But that's a really good, good takeaway from it, from it too. It's like, oh, so you're saying no to everything. Well, and, and that's just human nature too. It's scary. There's a lot of reasons to do that. But anyway, uh, anybody else have another uh, something you learned or uh, um, epiphany? No. Oh, uh, Joe. Uh, Joe Irwin. Go ahead. I'll unmute you. Okay. Yeah, you're great. Great. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Loud and clear. Okay. So what I was talking about, I was speaking to Clark, and we didn't get time to do the assessment on me. Um, but uh, we had discussed. We exchanged phone numbers, and after this session here. We're going to do a Zoom together, and he's going to interview me. Nice. You know, because I, I told him what I do, and uh, by the way, I love the documents that you're giving us, um, the tools, because eventually we won't have to be really following. I mean, we'll have it in here yeah. and in our heart, 
not mm -hmm. just on paper. I think awesome. But um, I said a lot of times I start my Facebook conversation. I'm asking a lot of these questions before I get to the well-being evaluation. So having to do it impromptu right on the spot, I was like, uh, 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 you know, stumbling. <laughs> So I have a lot, a long way to go to learn, but by applying the principles here is great. And it's mm -hmm. like you said, it's awkward, but when you do it more and more, it gets better and better and better. Yeah. So I, I encourage anybody, if you get a chance afterwards, I know it's the 4th of July, but if you could spend 10 more minutes with that person, even, even on the phone, um, to do the other person, if you didn't get a chance, just, I'm just asking, just saying. Yeah. yeah get, get comfortable with, with exercise get comfortable with learning do you have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset i got it wrong i'll never get it right that's a lie by the way i i didn't get it right i'm going to get it right i'm going to practice i'm going to practice and then go find a practice buddy i don't know about you but if you've ever decided to do a workout program by yourself you just can you can hit that snooze button in the morning and nobody knows but you and it's almost like your your integrity just chips away a little bit but you call a training buddy and you say can you meet me here at six you're getting up i guarantee it it's happening right so use that same that same dynamic in lots of areas of your life get a workout buddy find somebody that will show up and then you show up and then the next morning you meet them at their house and you walk with them. They're getting up. Otherwise you're knocking on their door and they're like, I'm still in bed. It's not going to happen. Trust me. <laughs> it just won't happen. So practice, practice, practice. What if, so here's the, here's the goal for this week. You know, you've got those, um, you, I want you, I would love it if you guys got really sweaty on this one and you did five full well-being assessments where you develop the cornerstones and you ask the two questions at the end. And after each one, comment. I would love it if you recorded a little video and put it in the Facebook group about what your experience was or comment on it, who you interviewed, what you learned, what wasn't good enough, what you're going to work on. And, and there's our community, by the way, our little Facebook power hour of um, boot camp group is a little community. And so diving in there and commenting there. And then um, in the, the document from uh, Saturday, uh, there is the assessment of how to empathetically connect with people and how to, how to um, relate to somebody without making it about you. And so those, that's the outline that Alex used. And that's something that's a, a little deeper. You're going to have to spend time. If you never go read that document, you won't know the power of truly empathizing with people. Go ahead, Clark. Let me unmute you. Go ahead. Uh, where is that document, Craig? Yeah, let me show you. You know what? I so appreciate you just asked that question. Why, well, thank you. I'm totally confused, so I figured I'd clarify. <laughs> yeah, because if you, if you don't know where to find it, now you're just going to be out there in seeking Searchville land, right? But under Summer Boot Camp Week 2, right? So this is, this is the video from last week. If you go under here under comments, um, this was all the information that, that, you know, number one, before. Number two, story can be shared in only 20 seconds. So here's the stuff that, that Alex was using. So go through and look at it. It's, it's basically summer boot camp week two. And it's in the first comment in there is the doc, is the information that um, Alex shared. By the way, if you're not in this Facebook group, you're missing out. You can get in here. Get on in here. All right, guys. So um, five well-being assessments would be – that would be great practice. It's going to feel weird. It's going to feel awkward. You're not going to maybe want to do it. But, man, go in there and bust it up. Do one on your spouse. Ask your – Mentor, if you can do a well-being assessment with them. Ask one of your clients, hey, can I, I'm, I'm practicing my, my health coaching skills. Can I interview you again? Get a new current reality. Practice, practice your wielding those tools, the, the, the trilogy tools. Ooh, there's a fun word. 
All right, you guys. So enjoy your 4th of July. Um, make sure when that you comment in the um, boot camp place um, Facebook group what we're doing and um, the, the results you're having. Work hard, guys. You're going to grow some big health coach muscles. They're going to look good on you. We'll see you on Saturday for week three. Bye-bye.